immediate successor to the 356. More drive orientated, more powerful, but in fact bigger and more comfortable as well. However, in 1963, when the public first saw these, the 901, Peugeot exclaimed its exclusive ownership of naming vehicles using three numbers with a zero in the middle. So Porsche couldn't have the 901, hence 911. And we all know and love today the 911. So that idea of being air-cooled, how does it bear in 2019? Well, I've been poodling around town a little bit today, and I have to say, temperatures have stayed absolutely bang where they are meant to be. And of course, as soon as you get into the more spiritual drive, it stays exactly where it's got to be due to the increase in airflow. We've got a five-speed box. Visibility around me is really good. There's so much glass, which is really confidence-inspiring, especially as this is my first day uh, driving a left-hand drive car. The instrument cluster in front of me really reflects the direction Porsche wanted to take with the 911. Very simple and driver focused. From left to right, we've got our fuel gauge, we've got oil, temperature and pressure. We've then got the tachometer right in the middle with our speed and then finally a nice analog clock on the far right. Nice black leather covered dash to match the perforated leather headlining. All together then a really nice place to be, albeit rather simple. shows of the 911. First gear has a lot more to give than you think it might do as you're pulling away and then as you get into second and progress through third, the overtaking power is fun even by modern standards. The styling of the car, well what can I say? To think back to 1963, the impact that 
that this car would have in the coming decades on the automotive world. It always has been and still to this day is compared and used as a benchmark to such a wide variety of different cars, whether it's the new Toyota Supra is in the price bracket of a Cayman or the new Nissan GTR R35 has got a similar 0 to 60 than the 911 Turbo. I've driven a GTR R35 and a 911 Turbo and yes the GTR will make a few meters on it to 60 but when you hit a ton after 110 that Porsche Turbo has got so much more to give than certainly an unmodified GTR. Now the owner has had a few bits done to paintwork as is inherent in owning a car of this age. Obviously red is slightly more prone to fading. There is quite a lot of black plastic trim around the car but in this example as long as it is well maintained and detailed it has survived the test of time. taking a look at the 911 with me today, something independent from the Minton Modified series. Last time on Minton Modified we had a look at the infamous Ferrari Testarossa, so please check out the link below for that video. Huge thanks to the owner of the car, it does take a lot to hand your keys of your pride and joy over to someone to take out. Please consider clicking the bell so you are notified of when I put out new content, there's lots more exciting things to come. Until next time, thank you very much and take care.